Howdy, howdy. Section 2, episode 2. We're going to go into some data sources, which is fun because this is where you start to get cool ideas of all the things you can do, and you start to see the mountainous amount of data that is out there on the web and the mess that it is at times and how sometimes the data you think should be out there just is so hard to find and then you find it and it's in what looks like a really obvious place, like a website that's been around for 50 years, feels like. And it, it just kind of blows you away how hard and how easy to find this data can be. So beyond just like getting familiar with the data formats like we did in the last video, you also have to get familiar with like how, how the heck do you find the data if you want to use it, um, even before you want to use it. So a lot of people come to me... Um, uh, one of the most common ones that people actually run into is uh, something called parcel data, which is kind of like the zip code areas of the United States. And this is pretty local. They aren't actually defined that way uh, technically by the government. They aren't defined as polygon enclosed areas. Uh, it's a little more complicated what postal codes, how they're really, their boundaries, so to speak, are defined. But we still have geographic data for coordinates because... Um, it, for the coordinates of these zip zip code areas, roughly, because it's still really useful for geographic purposes and for mapping purposes to have these as polygons. Anyway, one of the problems is that this data isn't really just like put out there by the government in a specific way, open and free, and yet it is available around the internet in different places. Um, so we're going to look at things a little bit like that, that you're going to have to like kind of squirrel out of the internet and find where this data is hidden somewhere, or if you can find it on some other website or something like that. Um, of course, I'm not advocating stealing any proprietary data, but a lot of data is just openly out there, and you might even be able to get more than you think if you're kind of creative about how you would um, recreate or, or understand the data. So let's look at data sources a bit, and I'll, uh, I'll talk even more about it. So this is that site we saw last time, geojson.io. Let's you make geojsons very easily, or view them, um, which is a nice little site. We're going to go over it a bit more in this video. Um, so we're going to look a little more at the different kinds of data that you get from different kinds of sources. So there's dynamic APIs, which might be something like, I need to get data of where the bus, um, where the buses are in my town because I want to build this kind of transit, transportation um, app. So I need to figure out where they are every 30 seconds. So that's a dynamic API. Somewhere that data is going to be being generated because all the buses have geolocators on them, but you have to find a way to hook into it. Um, versus, So that's one kind of data. And then there's static data sets, which is just like we need to map out um, the income of people in this kind of this county or this other county. Um, in a certain state, and that's that's dynamic in the sense that like it changes over time, but it's not dynamic data set. It's not changing every day or every second. You're just going to put that data up, find an interesting way to display it, make it available, put some filters on, and then it's going to sit there. And that's a different kind of data, and you have to look for it and handle it in very different ways. A lot of the time, the most interesting kinds of static data sets are the kinds that um, are somewhat creative, or they're just the or they're, they're creatively used. The data's already been out there, but the comparison hasn't been made. For instance, there's um, a popular Canadian mapping site called Census Mapper. It's a little out of date now, but it's very cool. And one of the popular ones that he had was that the, the um, government puts out the census data, and, and you can see how many people um, of certain age, say like, I don't know, age 4 to 12, are in a certain neighborhood. And he just... Um, kind of correlated that with being a trick-or-treater. So around Halloween, it was like he made a map of like where the highest concentration of trick-or-treating kids would be. Uh, and that's kind of a created, creative use of just like plain old data that just says what age people are in different areas of the country, in different areas of cities. And it kind of had fun with it. So that's a lot of the creativity and the intelligence around using static data sets in interesting ways, and maybe even combining them with dynamic APIs. So you could have something like, well, where do people tweet about um, income inequality when, uh, depending on what their income is? So there's a static data set of what their income is, um, usually put out by the government every few years as part of a census. Um, according to different kind of areas of the country. 
And then there's APIs like Twitter that'll stream out tweets that you can actually check where people are in real time tweeting about income. So that's just some interesting ways to, to do that. Um, so we're going to look at a little bit of OpenStreetMaps data, which is very uh, important in mapping online, and it's very important in what Mapbox uses. In Mapbox's own base maps, they incorporate all OpenStreetMaps data. Um, and we're going to look at some of that, and there's much more of it available than what Mapbox has. We're also going to look a little bit at some government data. Now, governments are, of course, very different. Um, I'm from Canada, but I still use a lot of uh, U.S. government data for the different types of applications and for different clients that I have. Um, and the different governments, i found, do things in very different ways, as you might expect. And the data is organized differently. They have different types of websites, different types of language for how they describe the different types of data sets. So navigating that stuff can be a real pain, but I just want to introduce you to it a little, and hopefully we can find some good tools to help you out. And then we're just going to go over a couple of the data creation tools that are out there, um, such as geojson.io, that are going to help you to create your own data if you're doing something like taking some historical map and trying to make it um, something dynamic. Uh, this is just like more of what we're going over, as you can imagine. All right, let's, let's head out to some other websites again. So I thought for the sake of this video, it might be worth just kind of looking up um, a random data set. Well, it's not going to be random because, of course, I thought about it beforehand, but essentially. So I was looking at historical maps the other day because I'd like to make one that is really similar, and I found this kind of cool map of an uh, old map in New York City, and there are, is um, all these buildings and stuff, and this could probably be found. I could probably find some of this data, like the building data, although this is old, so it's not going to look like that anymore. Whatever, I could still replicate something probably like this, but one of the things of the data that I don't have usually, because this is probably in OpenStreetMaps or something, one of the ones I don't usually have and that I can't find easily, it's these lines in the water. They're kind of like contour lines that you see on a map, but they're in the water. And those are called bathymetry lines. Um, and we're going to go try to look them up. Um, and try to find that data because I would actually like to make a map that has these kind of lines. And these might actually just be stylistic, and ultimately I could probably trace them if I had to. Like, these might not actually be real geographic lines, they might just be artistic. But still, I'm kind of interested, like, wonder what those would look like if I made a cool data set out of it. So I've just Googled data sets bathymetry. Of course, you kind of have to actually figure out that that's what you're looking for. Um, I didn't know it at first, and actually hope I'm pronouncing the word right. <laughs> um, but I just looked up like underwater contours and eventually found, well, that has a different name. So uh, when I looked this up um, before, it's hard to find it for maybe a specific area, uh, but I just, through Googling, uh, you know, I kind of come on some dead ends and then wind up at this... Um, data.gov, which is great, so it's uh, both government and and they have this whole accumulation of huge amounts of data sets, which are just like totally overwhelming to have to sort through, and it's hard to tell really what's going on, um, but I'm just going to say, okay, I just want to see if anything works here, and then I could try to find New York later, um, but here's some great lakes bathymetry, so... Um, it's even hard to know, like, where do I go? Like, okay, so there's all this stuff, and there's all this download tools, home pages. Um, so I don't really want to do a download. That sounds complicated. So why don't we just visit this page? Okay, so now there's this page that looks kind of old, but a lot of the geographic websites you're going to find are going to be like this. And uh, let's just say here. So this, ah, now this is looking pretty cool. So this has some lines in the water. Um, and you can see, there it is, download in Esri shapefile, and it's 7 megabytes. Cool, so we're within the data limits um, from Mapbox, so we could potentially download this and take it and, and do something with it. So that's really nice. So that's just, um, you can even see they have other things available. They've, like, they've sold this. So if you like how this looks, well, you could make a map, and you could probably sell it, um, assuming this is all open data. Um, I don't know how they... Uh, license U.S. government work. I don't know what that license is, but you should check it. So that's another note to be careful just who you take your data from if you're doing it for profit, um, especially. If you're just making an interesting map, it's rare that somebody is going to get mad at you for um, using, using some kind of interesting data in a relatively harmless way. 
So with that data, I could potentially upload it, but let's just see if they maybe have something for around New York. Um, so 743, so that's a lot. Um, and uh, that's with bathymetry. So there's all kinds of information here that is pretty complex. And probably if you just got to, it's probably even too much to handle. So you might have to go back and look in Google again and search through and and what you might encounter are some broken links. It's very common, very common with this geographic data, um, more than almost any other kind of data, that you're going to run into old broken links because this data was is often large, costs a lot to host it. There's a lot of old websites that, that people just got all the data from originally and they're still being used, um, but they're really old and the, they sometimes just go down and that's the end of that. So you have to be creative, you have to be persistent in how you're searching for data. Um, I believe, yes, let's go to OpenStreetMap. So you're going to have to uh, get used to OpenStreetMap as well. And there's a lot of different um, ways to access OpenStreetMap. And it can that can make it a little confusing at first. There's like a Wikipedia thing. There's different mapping tools that you can see different data sets. Um, but we're going to actually go to this download.geofabric.de. And this is a great server that has all kinds of information about different um, sections of the world according to OpenStreetMaps data, kind of bundled up in a, in a nice way. So let's just go to um, Europe here and you can Netherlands. So we're going to go into the Netherlands. You can see there's a lot of data about the Netherlands and then there's just like uh, some more, but we need more specific. I, I need it from Amsterdam. So this isn't actually where I found the data, but I wanted to show you this because um, there's also this kind of high-level data, and this also has a lot of shape files inside it, so you might have all kinds of other data inside, and this hooks up with OpenStreetMaps. Um, but another nice place if you need to find some more specific data, like I was looking for, is uh, MapsZen. MapsZen has a lot of <clears throat> um, actual like premium products and stuff when it comes to, to mapping and, and things, as you can imagine. And uh, But one thing they have that's really nice is this uh, Metro Extracts that creates, as you can see, snapshots of OpenStreetMap data into manageable metro area files in a variety of formats. So that's great. If you're doing something in a city, which most people usually are, um, or at least uh, if your data can be related to city uh, information, or if you're trying to build a you know a base map with, with just street data or that kind of thing, you can find it all here on Maps, and it's, it's really handy. So let's just search for uh, Amsterdam. There we go. Okay. So we go in here, and what's this map going to show us? Come on. All right, there we go. So you have the actual map here. So this is where it's showing. This is the core of Amsterdam right there. Um, and it's going to have all kinds of data. Uh, I'm not even sure what they group it all by the different OpenStreetMap tags. Um, so when I download this, it's quite a large shape file, and uh, you can see it's 269 megabytes, and then even the GeoJSON is 172 megabytes, so that's much larger than you could like open in your file editor. You'd probably crash your computer. Um, but this is actually a set of shape files, or some of these are sh sets of shape files that have like building data and road data, and the road data is classified by highways versus on-ramps versus side alleys versus walking paths and people have really classified this data down to that point where you can properly style it and build your own map from the ground up. Um, so this is a good place to find that data. Also just back in the um, the documentation about OpenStreetMaps is, a, is an okay place to kind of get acquainted with how it works. Some of these other formats. Um, but you're often going to just be using the data that you find on maps. You're not usually going to be building them from the ground up. Um, for the kind of data that you will usually be working with, unless you're doing a very specialized map like this, uh, you're going to find that data in, in data sets that are more like uh, dynamic m or, or more uh, related to area, putting, putting new information on a map, not just putting geographic information. For that, we're going to look at some uh, static kind of data sets that you could use, like government data, and also looking at some dynamic ones.